Hello everyone, welcome to Philosophy Roulette number 38, uh, where we grab a random philosophy paper off the interwebs and review it for you, right then and there. So this morning we did a simple escape from World Twin Earth, and let's just go spin and see what we land on. The logic, the logic of the knowledge norm of assertion. Um... Let's try not to do some. We were just talking about this sort of stuff, but I can do something. Let's see. Out of nothing. Uh, let's see. Perversion. Let's see. All right. So we've got Jack Woods on perversion and Scravati and Spolari on nothing. So let's see. I investigate syntactic notions of a theoretical equivalence between logical theories and recent objection there too. I show that as recent criticism. I don't want to talk about syntax right now. Too much of the uh, formalism is hard to, uh... Yeah, see, same thing here. We've got nothing occurs as a singular term. Although, that's kind of form. Hey, we haven't mentioned Grand Priest in a few days. This one mentions Grand Priest. We might as well take a look in that case. We had a, <laughs> a day or two where every other thing mentioned Grand Priest. And don't get me wrong, I love Grand Priest. But, don't... Everything was like Grand Priest, Grand Priest, Grand Priest. And I love him. But, like, we do not need to, uh... Talk about him constantly. But we do not have the uh, papers, so we're not doing that. So, in translation, avoid certain frustration. Hmm. Ooh, the cable guy paradox. Well, that definitely is uh, exciting. The cable guy paradox. All right, here we go. It's available, so. If you're in the chat room, you can uh, type exclamation point paper and the link will come up. Um, yay. Alrighty. Avoid certain frustration or maybe not. Cable guy paradox. I mean, I wonder if it's that's a, what's it called? Um, oh, is it he always shows up when you're not there? I wonder what it is. I'm thinking Larry the Cable Guy, being from America. In the situation known as the Cable Guy paradox, Hayek 2005, the expected utility principle and the avoid certain frustration principle seem to give the contradic give contradictory advice about what one should do. According to Alan Hayek, the father of the cable guy paradox, ultimately rejects the advice derived from ACF, avoid certain frustration. He concedes that something of a paradox still remains. This article tries to remove the lingering appearance of, paradox of a paradox by presenting an example that weakens the grip of ACF, a modified version of the cable guy problem, will be introduced in which the choice dictated by ACF loses much of its intuitive appeal. Let us first recall the original paradox. The cable guy will come to your home tomorrow sometime after 8 a.m. and before 4 p.m. Your, your friend proposes a bet on even money on whether the cable guy will come in the morning between 8 and 12 or in the afternoon between 12 and 4. You can choose which option you want to bet on, since the probability of morning or afternoon is the same, one half, and since your potential gain and loss are the same, on the assumption that nothing else matters but mo matters but money, it seems you should be indifferent between the two options. This answer is based on the expected utility principle. Then Hayek introduces an alternative argument, which he in the end rejects in favor of afternoon. If you bet morning, there'll be inevitably some, be some moment in the morning before the cable guy arrives when you will be aware of your some of your time has elapsed, and consequently the probability of afternoon will at that moment be higher than the probability of morning. So when you, after you get halfway through, I guess you could say, it seems like you've already lost half the chance that you've had to have him show up. So since it is certain that at some point you will be frustrated with your choice if you choose morning, but it is not certain that if you will be frustrated with your choice if you choose afternoon, 
there is a suggestion that you should bet on afternoon just to avoid frustration because you think well I don't know you, you're gonna be annoyed in the afternoon too but when you get annoyed you'll be annoyed sooner in the morning this suggestion is based on ACF which I formulate in the following way avoid certain frustration principle I suppose you now have a choice between two options you should you should not choose one of these options if you are certain that a rational future self of yours will prefer that you had chosen the other one unless both your options have this property yeah see I'm not entirely certain why you'd be more frustrated and the more you're gonna be frustrated either way that's the whole point of the cable guy because you don't know when they're gonna show up because guess what's gonna happen if you do it in the afternoon and then the cable guy is like not showing up and you got less and less time you're gonna be like he's gonna cancel on me I'm gonna kill somebody so that's what would happen in the afternoon Hayek notes that the choice to bet on morning falls squarely under the purview of ACF which conflicts with what is recommended by the principle of expected utility namely that one should be indifferent between the two choices yeah see I think this is a what's it called Hyper, like you're discounting stuff uh, incorrectly here. You're expecting to get frustrated early, but you, you, that's because you treat f frustration closer to you as more important than frustration farther away from you later on. Okay, but let's see what gets said here. One way to solve the paradox would, to, would be to put ACF in self in question by constructing a counterexample in which all of Hayek's conditioning for applying ACF are satisfied, but where there is no imperative to ACF. This is what I will attempt to do. Okay. Let us first change the conditions of the bet. Let's divide the entire period between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. into the following four temporally consecutive in sub intervals. The trillion. Epsilon 1, the trillionth of a second interval after 8 a.m. Morning, so morning minus epsilon, the rest of the morning. E2, the trillionth second after 12 noon. And afternoon, the rest of the time. Afternoon minus epsilon 2, the rest of the afternoon. Or to put it in more exact terms, um, epsilon 1 is 8 a.m. plus the epsilon. The morning is 8 plus epsilon to 12. Um, epsilon 2 is 12. To 12 plus epsilon and afternoon minus epsilon 2 is 12 plus epsilon to 4. Yeah. The division is shown in figure 1, not drawn to scale, which represents the whole period between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. That's up here. And you see these uh, epsilons are not to scale. They look like much bigger blocks than they actually are because they're infinitesimally small, really, the trillionths of seconds. Now, in the new version of the cable guy problem, the choice is between betting on one of the two time periods in the figure that are represented by white and gray, res respectively. Your option now are betting on either W, the white segment, or gray, the gray segment. Betting on W means you win if the cable guy arrives during epsilon 1 or, or during noon minus epsilon 1, and you lose otherwise. Betting on G means you win if the cable guy arrives from noon to noon to epsilon noon plus epsilon one excuse me or during epsilon two and you or the rest of the thing uh, the rest of the afternoon you lose otherwise yeah so oh wait, wait wait i'm sorry this is changing the whole thing um wait why are they doing that i mean when i'm on the two time period represent white and gray okay betting on w means you want the cable guy or, Okay, so this is not the same. You you win if it if the cable guy comes at the first instance, like they are there at 8 a.m. and then you then otherwise you get the next morning block and then the afternoon after that. So you win if you bet afternoon basically if they're there first thing in the morning or come in the afternoon, and then you get the uh, and the other bet is for. They come all morning, but they're not there immediately at 8 a.m. And you get just basically 12 inclusive as opposed to exclusive. Okay. So, I, I, well, I got to see what the uh, point is here. I'm not exactly predicting what is going on in this one. I'm still with my uh, bad discounting of future hassle is really the solution to this problem. Um, betting on G means, okay, so lose otherwise the difference between this and the original cable guy scenario is now that you first your first option includes bending on time because of two non-contiguous contiguous intervals epsilon one and the afternoon period 
if, however, the intervals W and Q are still of the same duration and exactly four hours. So accordingly to the expected utility principle, you should again be indifferent between two choices. Oh, are they gonna move the whole like uh, thing over and just sort of sore writes this thing? So if it's not, if you're not annoyed now, then you won't be annoyed in the next epsilon, two epsilons, three epsilons, four epsilons. And so you shouldn't be annoyed at any point during the day. Maybe that could happen here. ACF, however, clearly favors G because choosing W would lead to certain frustration of your future rational self during the initial epsilon, during the in, initial interval epsilon one. For whether the cable guy arrives during epsilon one or not, there will be certainly be an interval during epsilon one where you will regret choosing W, since you will realize some of your time has elapsed without the cable guy coming, and that consequently your chance of winning just became be it even very slightly lower than 0.5. So it favors the gray because this is gonna you're, you're gonna lose this because it's unlikely the cable guy will ever show up right on time, um, basically, and so that makes this smaller and then this more likely. Okay, so it's taking a little bite out of the uh, uh, white area there as opposed to the gray area. Okay. I mean, to tell you the truth, nowadays here, they've known about this for so long that when you schedule a cable guy, they give you like an exact time. They're like, they're gonna be here or like within 15 minutes. And it's it's fine because even if you have to, you know exactly when they're gonna come and so you have to wait longer to get an appointment, but there's no frustration. I think they've understood that the frustration is worse than the, uh, as long as it's scheduled that way. Yeah, maybe that's just our local uh, cable peoples. Although it is indeed certain that a rational future, future self of yours will regret the choice of W, let's look how another rational future self of yours would feel at it still a time later. Yeah, see, I'm not buying this, how my future self views this world. But let's continue. If you choose G, what is the probability that a later self of yours will at some future time regret that choice? Obviously, this probability is equal to the probability of the cable guy that the cable guy does not arrive during the interval. Explanation: A future self will regret choosing G just as long as the cable guy has not yet arrived at the, and the remaining portion of G ahead is shorter than the remaining portion of W ahead. So after eight o'clock, the short period after the duration of two epsilon expires without cable guy arriving, then a future self would regret choosing gray. Yeah. So once you have, once the gray section is shorter than the remaining white section, um, then you start to feel bad again. So you're gonna pinball back and forth if you just keep putting little slices in between here. That's very weird, yeah, so. Yeah, so imagine, yeah, this. Like, instead of uh, it being just a big white section, big gray section, it was every other thing. And so of course it's equal, like every other thousandth of a second was um the bet so if it, it be, basically the cable guy is going to arrive on an odd second or an even second now of course that's an, uh you're gonna have an even amount of time but what are you gonna do feel bad for like one second and feel bad the other way for another second feel bad this way so it's sort of weird sort of a uh, way of looking at uh how you feel good or bad about things like the, your regrets are weird here okay whatever since two epsilon is extremely, yeah, see, they keep doing this sort of epsilon things. Since two epsilon is an extremely small part of the whole time period, that's two thousandths of a second, of the whole time period with, within which the cable guy can arrive, the probability that the guy will not come during the period is very high. I don't like that sentence. I mean, you're, you're assuming any point is just as likely as any other point. So you mean very high just means it's a lot, it's a very short period of time, but I don't know, so that's a weird, it, it's trying to make a point here, but I don't like how they're doing it. So probably of a post two epsilon rational future self of yours will be frustrated that you chose G is very, very high, although lower than unity. And the probability that a rational later self of yours will regret making a choice G in this kind of scenario can be made as close to uni unity as we like, but making the interval two epsilon smaller and smaller. Now I'm back to ACF, avoiding a certain frustration. 
Avoiding certain frustration is based on the idea that other things being equal, a judgment of one's later rational self during Epsilon 1 should carry more weight because based on more comprehensive evidence than the judgment of one's earlier rational self before 8 a.m. But why shouldn't we then extend this reasoning and then also take into account judgment of an even later self after Epsilon 1, especially since this self is also expected to be frustrated with a very high probability. Admittedly, choosing W entails that one's early future rational self during Epsilon 1 will certainly regret one's decision. See, I I'm just not buying this sort of, because I think it's a, uh, there's discounting of a uh, future regret here. Choosing G, however, entails that one's later future rational self will regret one's decision with the probability that can be made as close to unity as desired by making epsilon smaller and smaller. The probabilities of frustration in these cases of the two decisions can be made as close to one as you would like. But then it is unclear why one should follow ACF. There's nothing obviously irrational about going against ACF and betting on W with its certain frustration of one's earlier future self rather than betting on G with its frustration of one's later future self with a probability that can be made as close to certainty as we please. Hayek was not convinced by my argument though. This is his response on personal communic communication. But in your way, in a way, your example only strengthens my paradoxical reasoning. Suppose you bet on G. You will certainly be glad for a little while during your period E1. Yes, you will enjoy watching, watching W dwindle for a short time. Then yes, you probably will be, the you will begin a period of frustration as we enter the gray region and G begins to dwindle. So you'll experience one gladness certainly and two frustration only probably. On the other hand, if you bet on W, you will experience a cert frustration certainly and gladness only very probably. So now there are two reasons to prefer G to W. One, certain gladness is better than probable gladness. Two, probable frustration is better than certain frustration. My argument based on ACF only gave you one reason to do so. Ah, yeah. Note that Hayek stresses that he does not ultimately advocate ACF. Indeed, the conclusion of his paper to was to reject it, nor that the reasoning in the nor the reasoning in the above passage. However, he offers both a prima facie plausible and the, however he offers both as prima facie plausible and finds it surprising that they must be rejected. I disagree with Hayek's response, but I think it is very useful because it helps us probe deeper into the core of the cable guy paradox. His two reasons for preferring G over W are, on one hand, certain gladness, the result of choosing G, is better than merely probable gladness, the result of choosing W. And on the other hand, merely probable frustration, the result of choosing G, is better than certain frustration, the result of choosing W. The result would be convincing if certain and probable frustration or certain and probable gladness associated with the two respective decisions were quantitatively the same, but they're not. Okay, why not? Take frustration first. Rather than here we are talking about the frustration of one's future self if a part of one's time elapses without the cable guy arriving, which proportionately decreases one's chances of winning the bet. You see, I'm not entirely sure that this is how you want to uh, break down the problem. You think you're getting more information, but that doesn't mean that the cable guy won't arrive in the time, uh, the remaining time. It's like you don't actually have the right sort of information. You're thinking, like, if you would take the bet now, that then clearly you'd be ma taking a bad bet. But you didn't take the bet then. You have to sort of judge the... You can only judge the time period by the whole block, not by part of it. It's like saying, um... Let's see how to say this. Eh, that's like uh, you get half the Powerball numbers and then you're saying, oh, you get all happy about it or you get all sad about it. But it's like, yeah, they when you do like one of those scratch off tickets, they always make it look like you're going to win and then you never get the last number. That's like saying, well, you get that little bit of gladness because you think it's good. It's like, yeah, but they that doesn't that that's not the point. You're missing how the probability works here. You have to look at the whole block of time to really understand the full probability. Until then, you're just sort of looking what would happen if you were to retake each, take the bet at that time, which is not the same thing as before. Granted, we're silly things and we 
think these ways that like we're actually losing something or winning something in some senses like gladness versus sadness like when you scratch off and you say oh look, look at this i'm gonna win the million bucks you never win the million bucks like the, like it never happens but like you think you're getting like oh i'm gonna get like five thousand dollars out of this so, like no chances not so uh, so i feel like there's something a little funky about this uh way you, you're getting glad and sad that it doesn't align with actually the probability here and uh I mean, that is part of the point, but I feel like the you're, it's, it's still not the right uh, way to understand the problem. Okay, let me quit my curmudgeon in this. Okay, so we just perform. Now it is obvious that the certain frustration will resulting from choosing W will be very small. Okay, we were talking about the frustration of one's future self as part of time lapses without cable guy revving, which is proportionately decreased by a chance of winning the bet. See, I don't believe on this. very funny under like i don't know i don't have this a uh, similar intuition as these folks now it is obvious from that the certain frustration resulting from choosing w will be very small because that little bit of uh w at the beginning when you lose that it's very small the worst case that that epsilon the worst case scenario would be that your future self would realize towards the end of the very minuscule epsilon one that almost one trillionth of a second of your time has elapsed and that consequently your chances of winning that would have diminished only by a practically negligible amount if you choose G, though, well, actually, it, in real life, that's weird because if the cable guy was early and then just waited around to the time, I mean, that would actually be a very good, uh, would be one of the more likely times that the guy showed up because if you're the first one on the list for the day, then you could actually feel bad about that. But anyway, that's not what these people are talking about. If you choose G, though, your future frustration will indeed not be certain, but it will be practically indistinguishable from certainty. In addition, this frustration will not be c contained within the very narrow range epsilon, as in the choice of W. On the contrary, choosing G, you're you will risk a much higher, larger frustration. That is, realizing with regret that a much higher proportion of your time has elapsed, your time than epsilon has elapsed without the cable guy coming. At the limit, there is a probability around one half that you will go through successive and even larger levels of frustration until almost your entire time expires without the cable guy arriving. Hmm. Assuming the cable guy is going to show up late in the day there. Briefly, if choosing between W and G comes down to choosing between certainty and a virtual zero frustration, and the high probability very close to approaching certainty and a much larger frustration is far from clear, choosing G is preferable. Yeah, because you assume they're not going to cancel on you too here. That's also the problem. You can get canceled on. Ditto for gladness. Is Hayek right that certain gladness is better than mere probable gladness? Again, no. When certain but tiny gladness is pitting against much larger gladness, gladness that is virtually, though not actually certain, an argument could be made for choosing the latter. Let me stress I do not want to defend that other argument. I merely use it to show that the reasoning in favor of ACF that Hayek finds prima facie plausible loses its force on closer inspection. Contra Hayek, two of the three possible reasons for choosing interval w, w over interval G. Contra Hayek, two of the three possible reasons favor choosing interval W over interval G. First, in the case of choosing W, potential frustration would be smaller and potential gladness would be greater than if one chose G. Second, deferring the judgment of, of one's later rational self in the spirit of von reflection principle also supports choosing W because almost an almost certain frustration expected by one who chose G would happen after a certain frustration expected by one who chooses W. And mutatis mutandis for gladness. Third, the only reason apparent for favoring interval G is that the future frustration is certain for one who chooses W, though not for one who chooses G. But to repeat, the difference between certainty and probability that we can make as close to certainty as we like should not carry much weight. So should anyone follow the, AC, the uh, ACF? Perhaps not. Um, yeah, on this, I think what the author here is saying is correct on their view of frustration and I'm not buying um their understanding of how frustration and uh, gladness work i think the argument is correct that i think this is a pretty interesting thing actually to look at frustration as um 
something that comes apart from the um, decision procedure here. The, so, because if, there is always um, the human factor, like m things that will affect how you view a bet, even if the bet should be perfectly even. But that doesn't mean that um, how you feel about it is going to be perfectly even. Uh, yeah, and you're see they're assuming that the level of frustration is going to be equal between the morning and the evening, and I don't think that's the case because in real life it's not the case. And so, in the setup it might work, but in real life it's not. That's the case. You get sort of a uh, uh, was it the test paradox where the person tells you a test like backwards induction. They tell you you're going to get a test this week, but I'm not going to tell you when. You're going to be surprised. So as you approach the end of like the time here period, you're going to be like, well, I'm going to be surprised because it's going to come. It's going to come. And at the end of like the day, if you had chosen the um, later one, you're getting like super angry, like right over here. Like you're 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 basically livid if the guy shows up at like this last pit bit. <laughs> So you're like, cause they're gonna cancel on me. Like the guy got into an accident that is not getting fixed. I sat home all day for this. And then the guy's not even gonna show up. So it's not even like the, the frustration level is not like it's just even between the morning and even, evening. The evening one is going to like, uh, yeah, it's gonna go way up like right at the end of the day. You're gonna be like, I'm going to kill them because they said they were gonna be here this day and they're not coming today. Um, so. <laughs> So this is what I mean about like the later discounting. They're thinking this like the frustration in the morning is not going to do it. It's like that's not realistic. Um, so I, I would avoid certain frustration. It's a uh, but I would I would not do it in the way that they are doing it because I don't like the way they actually understand frustration. So I would avoid. I, I agree. I'm going to avoid certain frustration principle. Um, but I I don't agree with what they think the future rational self will, would, would prefer. So they have a problem between the decision theory here and how they are applying uh, their rationality because it, these two things are not, this is not how it works. So they need a better, we, we not they, but we need to have a better understanding of the or how exactly uh, frustration works, not according to decision theory because this decision theory needs to take this into account and not uh be based off of it itself it's like you've uh got competing concepts here and now you're trying to adjudicate them but th this isn't uh they they um they affect each other so you've got like a feedback loop here so uh, especially with fr frustration like certain things you do will make you more frustrated and that will change how you feel about frustration and so you can't be talking about rational self in the future because that's not how frustration works. Okay, but other than that, this was a, I mean, it's a well-argued, well-reasoned otherwise, well-reasoned, well-argued uh, paper. So I like this, um, yeah, okay. I hope everyone has a good day and stay safe. Um, let's see, that didn't take very long, so I'll do one more after this. I'm gonna cut the stream, be back in five minutes and uh, do another one. Have a good day if I don't see you. And remember, you can always leave a suggestion on what you want me to read next. So I'll be back in five.